an NDN boyhood. My twin brother Jesse and I were born marked by a history of colonization and a public discourse of race we can't peel from our skin. We were made to take on a mode of embodiment that erodes from the inside out with vicious precision. At the same time, we came into being because love is mathematical. When two people desire each other, they multiply in various shapes and forms. In our very corporeality, we are thus a container for the terror of the past and the beauty that it can't in the end negate. In this way, we, like Indian boys everywhere, are subliminal. The first year of Jesse's in my life was a hotbed of decisions, desires, and disavowals that would hover above our shared emotional world deep into adolescence. This isn't my story to tell in painful and careful detail. So the picture I paint now is one that's rehashed from a handful of sources, including something like intuition. Here goes. My mom and dad loved, well coded in the ash of history. Twenty-somethings entranced by the ecstasy of optimism, they made a family out of nothing but the human need to be a part of something less resonant with toxicity than solitude. They didn't know how to ask the question Sheila Hetty poses in motherhood. Who is it for me to bring all this unfolding into being? Perhaps the philosophical basis for their children's lives was that they no longer wanted to exhale smoke. If we subscribe to the idea that we inherit bits and pieces of the psychosocial habits of our family, then my parents' approach to life-making might also be descriptive of mine today in their aftermath. Perhaps this pressurized orientation to memory, one by which we understand the past as a trace that pulsates in a body in the present, is always the case with life writing. The writer is called on by others to do the politically significant and ethically charged work of construction and then documentation. This is my job to report from the scene of an undead past colliding with a still-to-be-determined future. By the age of 23, my mom had four children, two girls and two boys, between the ages of three months and five years. My dad says Jesse, his legal name is Jesse Lee, and I were named so as to usher us into the world of rodeo. I've seen the pictures of toddler me dressed up as a cowboy, My dad positioned in the corner of the frame, smiling, perhaps bathing in the scene of self-recognition before him. Names are worldly. And it was with that knowledge, that emotional and maternal knowledge, that my mom gave us her last name, passed on to her from her dad. I imagine this was a rare practice in the 90s in northern Alberta, which was unshakably conservative. I like to think my mom did this to foreground our enmeshment, how irrevocably hers we are, how even outside the womb we populate the affective house of her, then and now. The story goes, my mom and dad fell out of love, hard, with an always accelerating speed, shortly after our birth. A forest fire can't be a refuge. My mom wanted to live in the land without a dangerous weather. In this way, we're profoundly alike. According to my dad, he went about the drama of raising twins on the reserve, enlisting the aid of a similarly inexperienced nephew. Six months slowly inched by as his sense of maternality disintegrated. On our first birthday, having lived 12 months in an ecology of complicated love, of sociological forces that allotted our awareness, we went under the care of my mom's mom, Nokum. It's impossible to deny that this reorganization indelibly ordered Jesse's and my future, those collectively and individually lost, and those newly birthed. Language is inadequate here to bring into focus the communal effort involving an extended family unit that included my parents and their parents that went into raising two Indian boys, not in a way that would ignore the coloniality of the world, but so as to engender life that might breach its grip. This is the old art of parenting in order to keep NDN kids safe from what lingers of a governmentally sanctioned death wish against them.